Uh, hi all, thanks a lot for joining in. I hope you guys are able to hear me and able to see my screen. Okay, that's great. So guys, uh, give me five minutes. Uh, there are uh, people still joining in and then we're gonna get started in another five minutes. All right, guys, uh, so let's get started. Uh, so I'm Rahul and uh, I'll be your instructor for the entire uh, Selenium training. And uh, just give me a moment, guys. Let me turn on a separate recording as well. Give me a moment. All right, so let's start again. So yeah, I'm Rahul and I'll be your instructor for the entire Selenium training. As far as my experience is concerned, I'm having over 13 years of experience in software testing it itself. I used to uh, work as uh, uh, one of the, like I used to work as a test manager with one of the company uh, in uh, India in Gurgaon. So right now I am completely into trainings. I deal with corporate trainings of Selenium, Appium, uh, then API automation and other automation tools as well. So I've delivered many trainings uh, in, in Delhi, in Mumbai, in Bangalore to companies like NIT Technologies, uh, Thesis, HCL Technologies, uh, Kronos, Striker. Then I've delivered training in New York as well to a company named as Shutterstock.com. I've delivered training in Seattle to Spoken Communications. So I'm into this automation industry from uh, over eight to nine years now where I have implemented a lot of automation frameworks. I've handled automation teams. So whatever that I've gained from my experience, that is what I teach in this training program. So uh, for the people uh, who are uh, who have joined online, I believe uh, most of you are from the testing background. So uh, like, okay, before we get started, uh, let me tell you about this webinar session. So this is uh, going to be a go-to webinar session where uh, by default, all the attendees uh, will be on mute. So in case uh, you want to uh, unmute yourself and you want to talk to me, there's a chat box. You can simply type in the chat box and I'm going to unmute you from here. So before we get started, uh, do you guys have any questions, any queries uh, that you want to discuss before we get started uh, with the training program? Anything that you want to discuss, any query that you want to raise? So you have a chat box, you can simply type it in the chat box. I, I hope you guys are able to hear me. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Rahul, I'm sharing my screen. Are, are you able to see my screen or not? I mean, uh, this is just a notepad that I've shared right now. So are, are you able to see the screen? No, you're not. Guys, how about others? Are, are you able to see my screen? Okay, you are able to see the screen. So, uh, Rahul, it's like uh, the issue. Uh, uh, okay, so some more, no. Uh, okay, could anyone else confirm if you guys are able to see my screen or not? Okay, so I got an answer. We are able to see the screen. Okay, so how come a couple of people are able to see and a couple of people are not able to see? So uh, let me uh, try resharing the screen. Okay, let me try resharing it. Give me a moment. <clears throat> okay, guys, uh, just see. Are you able to see my screen now? All right, perfect. Okay. Yeah, I just typed hi. All right, that, that's great. So guys, uh, do you have anything uh, like you want to discuss before we get started? So what I'll do, I'll, I'll try to unmute you all from here. And uh, like I'll request you to mute yourself from your end so that there should not be any background noise. 
So, yeah, you all are unmuted now. So now in case you want to talk, you can just unmute yourself from your end and you can directly talk to me. So anything that you want to discuss before we get started? So I, I really want uh, this session to be very interactive. It's not like, uh, uh, although it's going to be somewhere around 1.5 to two hours of a session, but I don't want that only I uh, should be talking uh, and uh, like throughout the session. I want that this should be a very interactive session. So you should uh, ask questions, queries, whatever doubts that you have so that uh, it should not feel like that only I'm talking in the session, right? All right, so uh, let's get started. Uh, so like this will be our detailed training program. So it's uh, it's like we are going to cover complete Selenium and complete core Java in this course. So the total duration, it will gonna take at least 2.5 to three months to cover all topics. And uh, there are various APIs, there are various integration that we are going to cover. So I'm gonna list on each and everything. By the end of the session, you should be very much uh, familiar with what all things that are uh, there in Selenium in the industry, what all things that are required for an automation project. So all these things, I'll be listing it down. But uh, like the classes will be over the weekends itself, like Saturday and Sunday. And it will be like uh, almost two hours of each session that we're going to do. And the timings for this batch will be uh, 9 p.m. IST and it will go up till 11 p.m. IST. So every Saturday and Sunday. So you can convert it into your time zones, right? So uh, like before we get started, uh, I, I believe a lot of you are already familiar with what exactly Selenium is. So anyone can uh, answer this question. So what is Selenium? Anything, everything that you know about Selenium, just let me know. Anything? You can even unmute yourself and directly talk to me. Selenium is a set of jars. It's an automation tool. It's a free tool. Okay. Any, any more answers? To which we can automate our web applications. Automate web, okay? Anything else? Anyone else? UI automation, it supports multiple browsers. Okay, so let, let me write it down. So whatever that you are saying, uh, it's an free, free as an open source. Open source automation tool for web-based application testing only, right? So it supports multiple browsers. So multi-browser support is there. As then you can run your test on Firefox, on Chrome, on Safari, on Opera, on IE, on Edge, all major browsers are supported by Selenium, right? So, but uh, it's mainly, it majorly used for web-based testing only, right? web-based testing as in there are other applications as well that we test like if i talk about web-based testing apart from web-based do we have any other applications as well where we perform testing desktop applications we have desktop based applications we have mobile applications anything else apart from this So web base is there, desktop is there, mobile is there, APIs. Exactly, these days APIs are very important. In APIs as in, uh, we'll call them as web services, right? So you may have heard about REST, you may have heard about SOAP, right? So 95% of the market is around REST. Anything else that where we perform testing? Not just automation, even manual. Performance. Okay, see, performance is uh, again on these applications itself. We perform functional, we perform performance, we perform security. 
So these are on uh, these applications, either uh, web-based or either desktop-based, either mobile-based. Right, any other application apart from this? Anyone? So many of you must have uh, worked in manual testing environment. So anything else apart from this uh, that you may have performed testing on, like apart from web-based, desktop, mobile applications, APIs. So there's another major area that uh, most of you must have performed testing on. So there is something called as database, right? So database-based applications, like you must have uh, like uh, performed testing using MySQL, SQL, Oracle, big data, ETL testing, right? This is all, uh, again, a big domain for database testing. So th these are major areas where we generally perform manual testing and we have automation testing tools as well. Right, but if we talk about Selenium, Selenium comes over here just for the web based application testing. But still, market of Selenium is quite huge. I mean, these days, if we talk about any manual testing opening as well, Selenium is like a pre request. So, why, why it is like that? Why not other automation tools? There, there, there's a uh, there's another automation tool which is like uh, the biggest competitor of selenium which one is that cypress uft qtp exactly so initially prior to selenium the market of qtp like you which is also known as uft these days was very strong but these days, you'll find very less openings of QTP as compared to Selenium. I mean, 70 to 80% of openings in terms of functional automation, you'll see it for Selenium, not for QTP. Companies are leaving QTP and moving towards Selenium. So what is the reason behind that? <coughs> QTP is not free. <clears throat> so yeah, that's true. QTP is a license component. There, there's a huge license. There's a heavy cost uh, for per user license that a company has to purchase uh, for QTP, whereas Selenium is completely free of cost, right? But the other thing with QTP is that QTP can automate web-based application and can also automate desktop-based applications. And if we talk about current market, 70 percent of the applications are accessed via url because it's a time of cloud computing every next project is on web and selenium is one of the best automation tool or a framework that can automate anything and everything available on a web right so this is one of the best thing with selenium whereas qtp uh, can automate desktop and web-based, but QTP is a license component. Now, license component is not the only reason why companies are leaving QTP. There are other open source projects as well. There are other open source automation tools, like uh, Abras talk about Cypress, that is more related to JavaScript. There are other automation tools like Water is there, What is is there, OpenST is there, and number of open source automation tools are there. But why Selenium is very popular? So we're gonna discuss about all these things, but before that, uh, tell me some more features of Selenium. So it has got a multi-browser support. Anything else apart from this? OS compatibility, multi-language support, exactly. So it has got a uh, multi-language support. So what all languages? It supports c sharp it supports python it supports java it supports php it supports javascript and it supports ruby all major languages in the world are supported by selenium so uh, it has got a multi language we have already written browser we have already written multi os support 
exactly so it has got multi platform support platform as in you can run your test on windows on linux on mac on ios on solaris right all major operating system in the world are supported by selenium on android right so ability to integrate with ci tools exactly so ci tools like jenkins like bamboo all major uh, integration can be done using selenium right anything else that you know about selenium <laughs> anything else apart from this so which language qtp supports QTP works with which language? VBScript, exactly. And which operating system VBScript supports? Windows, exactly. So VB is a Microsoft language, right? Visual Basic, and it works only and only on Windows. It means if you are working on QTP, you are limited uh, to your test execution only on Windows, right? And these days, if we talk about current market, there are many people who are using MacBook, you have many people using Linux machine. And if we are working on QTP, we can execute our test only and only on Windows. Whereas client want that his product should be tested on each and every operating system. So on the other end, if you talk about Selenium, the languages that we just discussed, these all languages, not just the scripting language, C sharp, Python, Java, these are purely object oriented languages. And if I talk about Java specifically, Java is one of the most powerful language. 70% of the market you, you, I mean, if you search for any opening as well, you'll see that 70% of the openings are with Selenium with Java. And then Python is the next uh, demanding language with Selenium. This is because uh, like uh, these days, there is a lot of uh, AI and machine learning things coming into the picture. So Python is very supportive in that. So that is the reason uh, the market of Python is also growing these days. Then c -sharp has its own demand, right? But Java still captures the major uh, uh, share in uh, the Selenium industry. This is because uh, object oriented, uh, it's actually a huge term. Like uh, if you talk about object orientation, then uh, there are a lot of things comes into the picture. It supports classes, methods, and number of things, which we are actually going to cover in our core Java sessions, right? So these language just, they support, they are purely object oriented. There are some scripting languages as well. VBScript is a very small scripting language. Right, whereas Java is a very powerful language and it's purely object oriented, it's very robust. If I talk specifically about Java, then uh, if you have ever installed Java, the very first message you're gonna see is that 3 billion devices runs on Java. So be it Linux, be it Mac, be it Windows, be it iOS, Android, any operating system that you name, Java is supported. Uh, on all major operating system. And if you're writing your Selenium code in Java, you can execute that code in any operating system that you want and that to completely free of cost. Because Selenium is completely open source, Java is open source, although the latest version of Java are a bit licensed as well. But if you're using basic core Java, you need not to pay any license, right? So, uh, that is what, uh, where, I mean, you can execute your test on any operating system, on any platform, on any browser. Whereas if you are working on QTP, you are restricted only and only to one scripting language and to one operating system that is Windows. So this is one of the best reason to use Selenium, right? Okay, uh, so Projecta is saying unable to hear me. So guys, uh, are you able to hear me? All right. So, okay, thank, thanks. All right. Okay, thanks for confirming. All right, so yeah, I was saying that uh, like Java is open source, so Selenium is op also open source, and Selenium actually supports all major operating system. 
Right. So anything else about Selenium? How many components are there that you know? Can anyone list down the components? How many components are there in Selenium? Okay, we have IDE. Okay, we have RC, we have web driver, and we have correct. Any more components? Apart from this, now Jenkins is not a part of Selenium. So there, there are four major components only, right? Out of which a market is using which component? Web driver. And what is the current version of Selenium? Selenium 4.0, Selenium 3. So 4.0 is currently at the alpha stage. So it's currently at the development phase. The current version is alpha 4.0 which is at the alpha stage. The, the actual version which companies are working on is Selenium 3. So it's 3.141.59, right? So which company came up with Selenium? Selenium is a component, uh, Selenium is a project of which company? Which company came up with Selenium? ThoughtWorks, exactly. So ThoughtWorks is the one who designed Selenium. And which company came up with QTP? Mercury, exactly. No, not Microsoft, Mercury. And later on, HP has acquired it, right? So there, there's a developer named as Jason Huggins who initially started this project in the year 2006 where he created the very first version of Selenium, that is Selenium 1.0, which includes the component IDE, RC, and Correct. right? So uh, 1.0 was uh, something, the core was initial JavaScript based. So the architecture of 1.0, like uh, how 1.0 used to work is like, uh, Selenium RC, it injects JavaScript on the browser. JavaScript as in, uh, see, if I talk about IDE, this is just a record and play plugin, right? Record and play as in if uh, you go to your browser and this is like Selenium IDE, this is Selenium IDE. Although in the latest Selenium 3 version, IDE is available as a record and play plugin on Chrome as well as on Firefox. But initially, when Selenium 1 was there, IDE was just a plugin to Firefox. So now you're going to find it in Chrome as well as on Firefox. And this plugin is only good for record and play and is not at all used in the industry. And then if I uh, go over here, if I click on, uh, let's say, record new test. It will ask me for a project name. I'll name it as, let's say, Google Project. And I'll click on OK. It will ask me for a URL. I'll enter the URL HTTP google.com. I'll click on Start Recording. And you can see a browser launched and navigated to google.com. You'll see Selenium ID is recording over here. I'll enter something. Let's say I'll enter Selenium and I'll click on Google search, and then I'll close this browser. So whatever actions that I have performed right now, all the actions are being recorded over here. I'll stop this recording, name it as Google test, and click on OK. And then if I want to play them back, I'll simply click on run all tests, and you're going to see that all the actions that I've performed will be executed. Right, so this is what record in place. So normally what people used to do is uh, once they have recorded, they actually uh, save this test. You can export it, click on export. And there are various languages available uh, where you can export like Java JUnit. If I click on export, it will gonna generate a file. Uh, let's say I save this file over here. So there is a file that's been generated. 
if I go to the location and open this file, just right click, open it with Notepad. Then you can see this is a code, a sample code that is generated over here. So what uh, people they used to do uh, is they copy this code, pasted it to editor, editor like you must have heard about Eclipse, and then they try to manipulate the values in this code. But this code is not at all complex that we need to be dependent on record and play feature. This is a very basic core Java code. Right, this code is very, very simple. Once we start working on Selenium, you should be able to write it very easily. Right, so we should not be dependent on record and play. Why? Because if we if we talk about uh, Selenium itself, if we talk if we are talking about all these components of Selenium, these components are used only 25% in your entire automation project. So your your entire automation project contains Selenium just 25%. Just 25% of Selenium is used in the entire automation project. So what what is the rest 75%? So whenever an automation project is designed, whenever a framework is designed, Selenium is used only 25%. If Selenium is 25%, then what is the rest 75%? Can anyone answer this? Java, exactly. So majorly part is of core Java. Anything apart from this, any other integration that you may have heard about, I saw someone said CI Jenkins, Maven, exactly. So what is Maven? It's basically a build tool. Test ng, so JUnit, test ng, what are these things? These are Java frameworks, reporting, exactly. So reporting as in, we have various reporting utilities like report ng is there, Extent reports are there, allure reports are there, which are very popular in the industry. Anything apart from this that you may have heard that these things are integrated with Selenium? Frameworks. So frameworks, uh, as in, uh, we generally call them as automation frameworks, but these are design patterns. So you, where you may have heard about data-driven, you may have heard about keyword driven. You may have heard about a hybrid framework. You may have heard about page object model. There are n number of design patterns out there. Page object model is very widely used in the industry. 90% of the companies are following page object model. Right, and we're gonna learn page object model in depth. Okay, anything apart from this? So still there are, there are many components that we're gonna integrate. I'm gonna list them down over here, right? But before we get started, the very first thing that we discussed about Selenium is that what exactly is Selenium? Selenium, it's an, uh, Selenium ID works on Mac. See, it's just a browser plugin. It will gonna work on Mac, it will gonna work on Windows, uh, all operating system, it will gonna work, right? It's just a plugin to your browser. but we are not going to focus on IDE because it's just for record and play. And we, with record and play, in case you're working on record and play, you cannot use these components. You cannot build an automation framework. You cannot integrate uh, report ng, extend report. You cannot integrate test ng, Maven, Jenkins. Whenever you're working on IDE, you are only restricted to record and play. The major part of Selenium is covered through the programming part itself. And initially when Selenium uh, 1.0 version was started, the programming part was covered using Selenium RC, right? Although 1.0 was not very successful, there was a lot of challenges in 1.0, right? Which uh, there's a person uh, with the name Simon Stewart, who actually, who have uh, seen these challenges uh, in Selenium initial project, and he started another project parallel to Selenium RC and named it as WebDriver. So in the year 2000 and uh, like 
2006, uh, this was there, 2000, this was 2004. In 2006, uh, he started this project. So 2006, uh, he started uh, this web driver project and he used to work as a lead developer with Google. And in July 2011, officially he launched the very first component of uh, Selenium, I mean, very first component of WebDriver after merging this with the Selenium project. So in WebDriver, not only Simon Stewart, there are many Google developers who have actually contributed into the development of this project. So since it's an open source project, not just Google, there are many developers across globe, developers from big, big organizations like Facebook, like Adobe, there are n number of uh, companies like SoftLab. They have actually contributed into the development of this web driver project, and that is the reason why it is very popular and very widely used in the industry. So they have overcome all the challenges. Now, what all challenges are there? Once we start with the web driver, we're going to discuss about the architecture uh, of RC as well, and even web driver. Although RC is gone from the market, but we should be familiar of uh, what all challenges were there in RC due to which WebDriver came into the market. What is the difference in the architecture of RC and WebDriver? So these are the things that we'll be studying once we start discussing about the WebDriver, right? But WebDriver uh, was the next component of Selenium. So after merging Selenium with WebDriver, they gave it a name as Selenium 2.0. And in 2.0, the components were IDE, RC, WebDriver, and Grid. Now, when WebDriver came into the market, people were already working on Selenium RC. There were many companies using Selenium RC, and all of a sudden, they uh, said that now stop using RC and start using WebDriver. So it is very difficult to migrate uh, the existing uh, projects into WebDriver. All of a sudden, I mean, they came with came up with WebDriver and they're asking to migrate all the projects. So it is really difficult. So what they said that in Selenium 2, they uh, in case you want to still work on Selenium RC, Selenium 2 will gonna have libraries of RC as well as of WebDriver. But later, uh, if we talk about this 2 release, in 2.44 release, they have actually deprecated Selenium RC. So this got deprecated in 2.44. Deprecation means that uh, you can still use RC, but if there are any issues, any challenges, uh, our developers will not gonna fix that. So we recommend you to migrate to web driver completely, right? And in uh, like this release actually went up till 2.53.1. So this was the last release of Selenium 2. And then Selenium 3 came into the market. So if you check for Selenium 3 library, you're not gonna find any RC in Selenium 3. It's only IDE, web driver, and grid. So RC was the initial coding library, right? It was a very small library, small coding library, which uh, does not have a wide functionality. A lot of things uh, we were not able to automate using Selenium RC. So there were many challenges. Even the architecture itself was, uh, challenge, uh, was a big challenge, which was uh, major related to JavaScript injection. So these all challenges were overcome in this web driver project. So Simon Stewart has the one, uh, I mean, Simon Stewart was the one who actually recognized all these challenges and fixed it in web driver project. And this library is not JavaScript dependent, right? So there are a lot of changes that they did in the architecture, which we're gonna discuss once we start uh, learning web driver, we're gonna discuss the architecture of web driver as well. And the last component they have designed is grid. Now, what is grid? <coughs> Can anyone tell me what is grid? What is Selenium Grid? Parallel execution? Parallel execution. Any more answers? Okay. Garish is saying he's not able to hear me. Uh, just give me a moment. Garish, everyone, sorry, else is able to hear. 
try rejoining the session. Multi browser, multi browser execution. Any more answers? So it's great for parallel test execution on multiple browsers. Is this a correct answer? How about others? Anyone else, guys? What is great? Execution on nodes. Okay. So what, what are nodes? OS. Exactly. Different machines. So, yes, I mean, test will be executed on different machine, but whether it will be executed parallel or sequential, that grid will not going to decide. Right? I know most of the people, uh, they say that grid is for parallel execution of test cases. Grid is not going to execute the test case parallelly. The parallel task is done with the help of your frameworks like TestNG. TestNG will gonna decide whether the test case will gonna be executed parallelly or whether it will gonna execute in a sequential way, right? So great task is to distribute those test cases onto remote machine, right? So great is something like if I design it over here, so it's something like uh, we have uh, a main machine and we have other connected machines, something like this. Connected machine like these machines are connected to the main machine. So the main machine will call it as hub. And these are the node machines. This could be a window machine running I on it. This could be a Linux machine. This is like node two, node two, a Linux machine running Chrome on it. This could be node three, a Mac machine running Firefox on it. So we have all the test cases over here. We have all the test cases on Hub, right? What we want that uh, when we run the test from here, it should run parallelly on all the machines so that we can perform something that is called as browser compatibility testing, right? Which if we talk about doing it manually, then how to do browser compatibility testing manually? Let's say I have thousand test cases. I'll first test it on IE, then I'll test it on Chrome, then I'll test it on Firefox, then I'll test it on uh, Mac, then I'll test it on uh, Windows, then on Linux, because end user could be using any operating system. He could use any any browser. So my client want that his product should work fine on all major operating system and on all uh, major browsers. So if we talk about grid, grid actually automates the entire process. So there is no manual interference. You can keep all your thousand test cases over here. And when you run them, you can even have 200 executed on this machine, 300 executed on this machine, and rest all executed on this machine. You can even distribute your test cases on multiple machine for parallel execution. So that is what a task of grid is. This is again another unique component which you're not gonna find in QTP UFT because it runs test only on Windows. Whereas in case of Selenium, multiple platforms and multiple browsers are supported. So this is what the fourth component that is Selenium grid is all about, right? But again, the very first thing that we discussed, Selenium is not actually a tool. Not actually a tool in the sense, you cannot install Selenium. 
you're not going to get any setup file like we get in the case of QTP, RFT, UFT. We get a huge setup file. We double click on it. It gets installed on our machine, provide as a platform where we can do record and play. We can do scripting. It is nothing like that with Selenium. You'll not even you'll not be able to see Selenium as a UI, as a GUI application. You cannot install Selenium. If Selenium is not a tool, then what exactly Selenium is? What else we can call Selenium as? Just give me a moment. Set of libraries, jars. So we're calling it jars because we are working in Java. So in Selenium, uh, if you're working in Java, Selenium is available in the form of a jar file, right? In Java, you get jars. In Ruby, you get Selenium in a form of a gem file. In C Sharp, you'll get Selenium in a form of a DLL file, right? You can call it as a framework, right? So Selenium can be called as a set of library it can be called as a framework it can be called as a project or i can also call it as an api so selenium is basically an api now what do you understand by the term api what is an api so as i'm saying selenium is an api what is an api So what is an API? Even in manual testing, you must have heard about this term a lot. Communication protocol, which lets two softwares communicate with each other. Very true. Anything else apart from this? Anyone else? What is an API? Application programming interface. That's a full form. So what, what application programming interface, what it contains? What do we have inside API? A business layer. So what do we have inside that business layer? What is written inside that? Tools, subroutine, protocols, code. Okay, so when we are talking about API, I know web services are also API, but API itself is a huge term, not just web services. We have a code written, we have methods to communicate. So what do we have inside code? We have methods, we have classes, we have data members, we have variables. It's actually a complete programming project, right? So when I'm saying Selenium, it's an API, it is actually collection of a lot of classes, a lot of interfaces, a lot of functionality, which is already developed by some company. And we are using those functionality in our project in order to automate our website. So everything is already developed, but it is available in a form of some collection of libraries. Let's say, uh, let, okay, let's take an example, a simple example. I generally cover this in all my demonstrations. So let's say if I talk about API, uh okay can you give an option unmute uh sukumar i believe uh, i have unmuted everyone uh let me try doing it again and just see if you are able to unmute yourself let me know if you are able to unmute yourself all right that's great so yeah Okay, you are still not able to do it. Uh, let me try doing it for you. Yeah, you are now self muted. So you can try unmuting yourself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right, that's great. Right, so if you want to discuss anything, you have any question, you can discuss it. Okay, okay. All right, sure, thanks. So uh, what is an API? Let's say I'll take up a sample example. Let's say I'm a Java developer 
and I work with some xyz.com. So here I got a task that I need to design a calculator. Now in a calculator, there are various operations available. I can add something, subtract something, divide something, multiply something, and so on. There are a lot of features in calculator. So I want to design all these features uh, as a Java developer. So what I'm gonna do, I'll be creating a class with the name as calculator. Now, I believe every one of you must have uh, studied C, C++, any basic programming during your graduation. Is there anyone who has never worked on any programming language? You can just type it in the chat box. Otherwise, I'll assume that everyone has uh, in their life, they must have started learn and practice. That That's fine. I'm not talking about like, I know many of you are coming from a uh, uh, testing background. So you might not have got chance to write code, right? So you may have forget all the concepts, but don't worry about it. As I said, in the very beginning, we'll be covering complete core Java from scratch, right? The sort of Java training you're gonna get, it will gonna help you in building your uh, strong base on core Java that is actually required for selenium so we are not directly going to jump into the selenium sessions we'll first going to train you uh, in core java and building your uh, programming base and then we're going to make you work on selenium so that is the reason there's a dedicated uh, at least six weeks training dedicated completely on core java and then we're going to start the selenium part right so <clears throat> for today's session if you have ever heard about what a class is what our function is, that is the only stuff that is required for today, right? So don't worry about if you're not familiar with the programming part, we are going to cover it from scratch. So just try to understand the concept, right? So uh, I know, I mean, for testers, programming is uh, a little uh, like, uh, like many testers are afraid of writing code, but don't worry, in this training, you'll be trained in such a way that you'll definitely gonna love uh, the programming part that we are going to use in Selenium, right? So uh, that you're gonna come to know, like tomorrow we have another demo session on Core Java. So once you attend that Core Java part, you'll be able to come to know that what level of Core Java that we are going to cover, right? And that will actually gonna build up your interest in the programming part as well, right? So uh, let's say, we are talking about uh, the API part. So I have to design a calculator and I've created a class as a calculator. So what, what do we have inside class? What is there inside class? Anyone, what is inside a class? Objects, data members, methods, class members, methods, great. Yes, that is, these are the things that we have inside class, variables, exactly. So uh, what all things that we need to design in a calculator, like we need to design add, subtract, divide. So we'll be creating them in a form of a function. And a function is called as a method in Java, if we are working in Java. So I'm gonna create a method called as add. Inside this method, I'm gonna write some code. If you call this method, it will gonna add some numbers. Similarly, I'm gonna create a method called as subtract. I'm gonna write some code inside this. If you call it, it will gonna subtract some numbers. Same way, I'm gonna create a method, divide, multiply, and so on. What all functionalities are there inside calculator? I'll be designing all these functionalities in a form of one-one methods, right? So like, let's assume I've designed the entire calculator functionality. Now I want to call this addition method from this class in order to check everything is working fine or not. So how to call a method from a class? What is the syntax for that? How to call a method from a class? Anyone? Class dot method name. Class dot class method name. So can I simply say calculator dot add? Will it gonna call the addition method? Okay, class name object equal to new class name. So class name object equal to new class name. This is how we're gonna do it. 
it is static uh, if, if you can we can call directly now yeah if, if it, it is if static can... so we uh, yeah. have not yet uh, talked about static non static right so if i am not uh, declaring anything static so this should be non static yeah if it is static we can call it directly like this but in the current scenario we have to create an object of a class this is how we create an object of a class and then if we need to call the method name we simply going to say object dot the method name right so this is how if, in case if you run this code whatever it is written inside the addition method will be executed and same way if you want to call other methods you can simply say ob object dot uh, subtract object dot divide and so on instead of this object you can even give it a different name you can even say abc you can even say calci and if you are saying calci then you'll be writing it like calci dot subtract calci dot subtract and so on but yes in order to call any method from a class you first need to create an object of a class like this way now in this statement what is an object so what is calci here rajat is asking and this is the same question what is an object inside this statement calci how about others so i can see there are 17 to 18 uh, people joined the session so i i want that everyone should participate in uh, the question and answers so i want this from everyone what is an object over here in this statement don't worry if it is correct if it is not correct just answer it okay calculator is an object calci is an object calci is variable calci okay how about others new calculator okay i got another answer new calculator is an object so 90% of the uh, answers i got that calc is an object and then i got one answer as new calculator as an object i got one answer as calculator as an object so what exactly is an object is calculator an object is calc an object is new calculator an object calc is an object okay so yeah i mean 90% of the time i get the same answer that calci is an object but calci is not an object calc is actually holding the address of an object which is actually created whenever we say new calculator this creates an object in the memory and calc is just holding the address of an object calc is just a variable we call it as a reference variable as well and this calculator this is a class but here it is treated as a type so this calculator is a type of this variable this variable is a type of calculator right so calculator is treated as a type this is just a variable this is an assignment operator this is a keyword and what this thing is called as what is this called as the highlighted one anyone constructor exactly right so uh, what is this statement we're going to check this practically as well so uh, previously people used to write code in notepad right but time have changed there are many editors available in the market with artificial intelligence if you're not good in coding these editors helps us a lot while writing code if you make any mistake these editors provide us uh, suggestions let's say if there are 100 methods inside a class we need not to learn all those 100 methods we simply say calci dot it will show us list of all the methods and we can pick the methods one by one from there so some editors are paid some are open source like uh, intellij is there netbeans is there webstrom is there eclipse is there eclipse is one of the most 
popular editor, very widely used in the industry, and it's completely open source as well. So we'll be working on Eclipse itself throughout our lectures, like Eclipse IDE. IDE it's like an integrated development environment. But there's a prerequisite to get started with Eclipse is that you need to have Java installed on your machine. Java as in JDK, Java Development Kit. Anything 1.8 or above is supported by Selenium. So all the latest one is Java 13. But if you have already installed Java 13, I would recommend you to uninstall that. Go to your control panel and check which version of Java you have on your machine. The Java 13 is not very stable for Selenium. So if you click on uninstall a program, you should be able to see over here what version of Java you have on your machine. Like I'll show it to you. On my machine, Java, where's Java? See, this is Java 8, right? So if you see any other version apart from it, I would recommend you to just uninstall it. It will not gonna hamper any running program. Just uninstall it and then go to Google and simply type download JDK 1.8. And here from the very first link, now Java is by Oracle now. So from this link, just accept the license. Java is available on different OS, Linux, Mac, Solaris, Windows. Installation is very straightforward. Just download this exe file. Like I'm on a 64 bit operating system, I'll be downloading this exe. If you are on a 32 bit machine, you need to download this exe. So it comes as a exe file. Installation is very straightforward. Double click on the exe, next, next, and Java gets installed in your machine. During the installation, you're going to see uh, a folder of Java inside your C drive program files. And here you're going to see Java over here like this. If you open this, you'll find one JDK and one JRE. JDK stands for Java Development Kit and JRE is Java Runtime Environment. Now, what are these two things? You need not to worry about it right now because the very first lecture of your core Java will gonna cover what is JDK, what is JRE, what is JVM, where Java came from. All the theory part of Java will be covered in the very first lecture. We're gonna start Java from ABC, right? So. For the timing, what you need to do, if you go inside this JDK folder, inside this bin, you're gonna see Java over here. Now there are many applications or there are many utilities that will gonna integrate with Selenium. Uh, like we just talk about Jenkins, we just talk about Maven, we just talk about TestNG. Now these are the things which will not gonna work on your machine if Java is not there. So what we need to do in order to tell all the programs where exactly Java is, we need to configure Java globally on our machine. Globally in the sense we need to configure something called as environment variables. As in what we need to do, we need to copy this root project, uh, this root path that is of JDK. Just copy this and right click on your PC, go to properties, click on advanced system settings. And here you're gonna see environment variables. Click on this. You need not to do anything inside uh, the user variable. You simply need to go to system variable and click on new. And here you need to give a variable name called as Java underscore home and paste the path of your JDK folder. This is a standard way of doing it. Right, once you click on okay, you're gonna see Java home created over here. Everyone actually does it in the same way. So after this, I mean, this, this is just a variable that is holding a value of your uh, JDK folder, the path of your JDK folder. If you go down, you'll find a global variable over here called as path. If you edit it, you're gonna see a lot of things which are already configured over here. These are some of the things that gets configured when you are installing your OS or installing some different programs, they add their global settings over here. 
So you should, these are the crucial settings. You should not delete, modify, edit any of the existing changes. Other, otherwise, I mean, any of the existing stuff, otherwise it might hamper your existing running program or may corrupt your Windows as well because system 32 library is also added over here. So what you need to do, simply click on new, at the end, you just need to type percentage Java underscore home percentage. So when you add this thing, the variable that you have created, which holds the JDK folder path, that value will gonna come over here. And Java is inside the bin folder. So you simply need to say backslash bin, that's it. Like I have already done it over here. So I'm not going to redo it. I'm just going to delete it. So once you're done with this, click on okay, click on okay, click on okay, and Java is successfully configured. Now you can go to command prompt and just a moment. And simply type Java hyphen version. We're gonna show you the current version of Java on your machine, like minus 1.8. So if, if this message shows up, it means Java is successfully configured. Now the next thing that we need is an editor where we can write the Java code. So for that, we'll be downloading Eclipse. So again, we'll go over here, we'll say download Eclipse. So let's click on this. And you need not to click on download directly from here you need to go to download packages because there are a lot of components in Eclipse. Eclipse is just an editor that supports C++ as well. You can write PHP coding as well. You can write uh, JavaScript, Perl, Python. It is, I mean, the, there's just an editor that supports multiple languages. We need Eclipse for very basic core Java component. We'll be downloading the latest version of Eclipse. So if you are getting started uh, with, uh, uh, like Eclipse and the Java programming, and uh, you have never worked on Eclipse, I will recommend you to download the very latest version only. Even if you have some older version of Eclipse, like Eclipse, Indigo, Galileo, Helios, they were very old components as well. If you still have those components, I would still recommend you to download the latest one because this is one of the best component of Eclipse and support a lot of plugins which are inbuilt inside it. Like we talk about Maven, we talk about Git, and number of Plugins are already installed in the Eclipse, right? So from here, you will be downloading it for Windows 64-bit, Mac, Linux, all operating system available. Click on this, this will gonna give you a zip file. So this will gonna show up like this. I've already downloaded it somewhere on 300 plus MB file. So I just added, downloaded it here. There's a zip file, you're gonna get it. Unzip it. So this is one of the uh, just previous version. If you open this, you'll see a lot of files over here. Nothing uh, to install, no application to install. This is just one single application, double click on it. We're gonna launch Eclipse, that's it. You're gonna see error over here in case Java is not configured. So the very first thing, very first pre-request is to configure Java, then launch Eclipse and uh, this is the first screen you're gonna see, which will ask you to select your directory as workspace. Basically, a workspace is a location where we'll be maintaining our project code. Whatever coding we're gonna do, we're gonna store at some location, that is what workspace is. So I'll generally give the workspace name with the batch name. So I'm gonna name this batch as batch 1st Feb 2020, right? And what all coding that we are going to do at the end of each session, I'll be sending you the recording of each session. We are actually recording this session as well. So in case you missed to attend any session, you're gonna get the recording as well as the coding will be uploaded to the portal. So there is a portal uh, in case you are familiar of, uh, this is the portal where we'll be hosting all the recordings. So I'll just gonna make you navigate to that particular path. So inside this, you're gonna see a section called a Selenium online training recordings from the live session. So from here, uh, 
this is a current uh, ongoing batch. This is a classroom batch which is going on, which is currently at uh, day six. So on top of it, you're gonna see your batch with the name batch uh, uh, Feb 1st, Feb 2020. So all the recordings will be hosted on this platform. So you should be able to view the recording. You should be able to download the code. All the files and utilities that we're going to add will be uploaded onto the same. And in case you want to refer any previous batch, you can go through the previous batch recordings as well, right? Not only this, uh, with this, uh, you're also gonna get access to a couple of more tutorials from here. So this is one Selenium web driver with Java basics, advanced architect. Now this course uh, covers 100 hours of recordings. So your entire core Java is covered and all major utilities, frameworks, everything from latest Selenium 3. Even I have added Selenium 4 topics as well. So uh, I keep on adding new videos related to Selenium. So you're gonna get lifetime access. There are many live projects as well covered over here. So you're gonna get access to all these things. Not just this, there's one unique course that I've created, uh, which is called as Automation Architect Selenium with seven live projects. So you're also gonna get access to this Automation Architect part. So this contains these major frameworks. This course is only for uh, framework designing. So for this course, the prerequisite is that you should be good in Selenium so that you can directly start with major frameworks. So this course completely talk about integration of various components, Jenkins, Docker, parallel execution, multi-threading. So it's a, it's a very huge course. So once you are done with this, uh, uh, like seven live projects, you should be able to crack any Selenium automation interview easily. So these are some of the things that uh, you're gonna get additional access to apart from what we are discussing in the live sessions. So you're gonna see that at the end of the session, you're gonna have very solid base around core Java as well as on Selenium, right? And this will be a lifetime access. So you're gonna have lifetime access on all these courses, right? So this is where we'll be keeping all our recordings. So let's create a new workspace and let's try to understand what is an API first, right? And then we'll start configuring Selenium and we're gonna see the very first program on Selenium. Before that, uh, if you guys have anything to discuss, any questions so far, I hope you're not getting bored. If you have any anything to discuss, you can discuss it right now. Till the time eclipse is launching. Yes, uh, we'll try to uh, cover all major topics which are required for Selenium. Up till collections, we're gonna cover it. After the training, you should be capable enough. You should be able to justify two plus years of experience in Selenium easily. How would this course be different from uh, the Udemy course? See, this is these are the live sessions. So live sessions will always gonna cover the latest part. So can I use Eclipse Oxygen? You can use, I mean, any version of Eclipse, but Oxygen is quite an old version. So I would recommend you to come to the latest version now. Right, although we'll be using basic core Java only, but still many integration that we're gonna do that comes inbuilt inside this latest Eclipse. Right, so this is welcome screen. We're just gonna close it. And this is your project explorer where we'll be maintaining the project hierarchy. Here we'll be writing the code and here we're gonna get the output of that code. So uh, what we have to do now, we have to design a calculator as a Java developer. So as a Java developer, I'm just gonna right click inside this project explorer and uh, yes, Ranbir, the session time will gonna remain the same because there are many uh, people who are joining from uh, US and UK as well. So we're gonna make sure uh, that this should be the standard time so that everyone can uh, join at the same time. Sure. So I'm gonna click on new and then I'm gonna click on uh, project and then gonna select Java project from here, click on next and we're gonna give it some name, some project name. Let's say I'll name it as Calci project. You can give any name to this project. Click on finish. Uh, 
and then click on open. All right, so this is a project that is created. If you open this project, you'll find uh, one JRE system library and one SRC folder. So in SRC folder, we'll be adding all the coding part, like creating classes, interface, and a number of other things. Apart from this, there is something called a JRE system library. If I expand it, you'll see a lot of jar files added over here. These jar file contains internal classes of basic core Java. Right, as in uh, you, you must have uh, studied C, C++ and uh, while programming in C, C++, you must be familiar with like we include some header statements like include conio.h, include studio.h. Similarly, when we used to work uh, in Java, I mean, uh, in Java on Notepad, we used to manually add uh, import statement like import, uh, java.util.star import java.math.random and number of other libraries similarly when we are working on eclipse we need not to worry about these internal class imports that is the task of eclipse i mean whenever you create a java project all the internal classes of java are mapped to your project so whenever you're calling those internal classes you need not to import that manually eclipse will going to handle it in its own way you just need to focus on creating your own classes. So let's say I create a new class. I'll simply right click on SRC, say new and click on class. And here I need to give a class name. So I'm gonna give the class name as let's say calculator and check this public static point main and click on finish. So whenever we are giving a class name, we need to make sure the class name always starts from a capital letter. This is very important, right? There's something called as camel casing that we are going to follow, where the class name is always in a capital letter, a method name is always in a small letter. You can see this is a sample code provided by Eclipse. This whole thing is a class. This is a method. These are just comments. I can remove them. So this is a by default method in Java with the name main. Anything that we need to execute in Java should be present inside this main method right so this is where the execution starts in core java and there is something public static void you can see something in reddish color something in black color all these reddish color are predefined keywords like public uh, private protected what we call it as what are these things anyone what is public here? What is public, private, protected? What are these things? Access specifiers, access modifiers, exactly. Then we have something called as static, non-static members. We have void, int, string as a return type to a method. This is a main method, right? So what are these things? You need not to worry about it right now because we have one one lecture in core Java for all these things. What are access modifiers? What are return types? What are static, non-static members? How to create a method? How to create a class? What are objects? Everything will be covered from scratch. So don't worry about it right now. So for right now, we are just looking at a very basic concept, like what is an API? For that, we are designing a calculator and we have created a class with the name as calculator. Now in a calculator, there are various methods available, like add, subtract. I'll be designing those methods. I'm gonna create a method over here, name it as public void add. And as I said, the method name always start from a small letter because there's something called as camel casing that we are going to follow that entire industry follows. Let's say there's a class name. The class is named as uh, the dark knight. So you can see the class, uh, there are three words over here the dark and night if i read this as it is it is not very readable so yeah i mean complete oops concept will be covered don't worry about it polymorphism abstraction inheritance encapsulation everything will be covered in very detailed manner so don't worry about it right so uh like i was talking about this as a class name if i <laughs> yes, Rajat, collections will also be covered, right? All set, set, list, uh, hash map, hash table, all these things will be covered. So rest assured about the Java part. You'll get one of the best detailed training in Core Java. Okay, so let's come back to the topic. So like I was saying that 
the dark knight the dark knight contains three words if i read it as it is it's not very readable to make it readable if it is a class name we're going to start it from the capital letter anything joining should be in caps so this is how it becomes the class name and similarly if it is a method name we'll start it from a small letter anything joining should be in caps so this is what camel casing is so next time if you read uh, like uh, if you go through any coding part of any developer you're going to come to know okay this is a class and these are methods right this is the same standard that is followed everywhere in the industry so we're going to follow the same coding standards in our project as well so inside this ad we're going to write some code which will going to add some numbers so right now uh, we are not let's say we are not familiar with the coding part so i'm not going to add that logic for addition I'm simply going to print something. So how to print in Java? Like uh, I said, uh, the very first program of any programming language is to print uh, something. Let's say in, in main, I'm talking about the execution starts from the main method. So if I talk about uh, printing something in C, you must have worked on C. How to print in C? So how we print in C? Okay, how about others? Anyone worked on C? Anyone knows? C out, C out is not for C. Printf, exactly. So for C, we write printf and what about c plus plus c out exactly so c out is for c plus plus and how about core java how to print in core java system out print exactly so this is what we do the very first program of any programming language is to print hello world so inside system out print ln we add a double quotes. There's the run button. I just click on it and you'll see that hello world is printed over here, right? So now, since we have not studied any programming right now, what, are going, what I'm going to do instead of implementing addition, what I'll do, I'll just cut this and paste it over here. And we're gonna, instead of hello world, I'm gonna write adding some numbers means when you call this add method it will not going to add it will just going to print adding some numbers same way i'm going to implement other methods i'll paste it control shift f will align everything properly so next is subtract i'm going to write subtract some numbers then divide then i'm going to write divide some numbers and then multiply so I'm gonna write multiply some numbers and so on. <clears throat> so let's assume we have completed the entire functionality. And now I want to call this addition method from this calculator class. So we have just seen how we're gonna call this method. We'll go inside the main method, right? And then uh, we'll need to create an object of a calculator class like we did it over here. I'm just gonna copy this and paste it inside the main method. And let's see if it works see there is no error there are no errors in the code it means whatever that we have written is correct this is how we create an object of a class now if i say calci dot it will show me a list of all the methods inside this class that we have created one of the methods is add the other one is divide then multiply then subtract i can call this method one by one like i called calci dot add click on run and you're gonna see that it will gonna print adding some numbers same way i can call other methods calc dot subtract calc dot uh, divide calc dot multiply and if i run this you're gonna see everything is executed but we have three only what three add subtract we have created multiply we have created divide we have created add we have created subtract we have created four methods right 
So one by one, we can call all the methods. If I click on run, all the methods will be executed. Now there is one more method, which has the same name as of the class name, what we call it as something like this. What we call it as constructor, <coughs> constructor. <clears throat> so what, what, what is a constructor? Anyone, what, is, what, what are constructors? You can unmute yourself and you can give the answer if you want. It calls by itself, okay? Allows you to set values to variable defined in class, correct? It calls as soon as object is created. Yeah, yeah the, instead of calling a method, constructor, when I create a object, a constructor is uh, called by default and then uh, the um, variables are uh, initiated. Then the variables are initiated. Okay, that's correct. Right. So over here, we are not defining any variables right now. So I've just uh, created a constructor like this. As I'm saying, it's like a method. I can write some code inside this. So let's say I'm going to write a code calling constructor, right? So now how this will be called? Shall I go over here and call it like calculator? I'm not gonna get it, right? Because this is not a method. So how this will be called? How the constructor will be called? As soon as the Automated. object is created. Yeah. As soon as the object is created. So where the object is created, object is created over yes. here, right? Yes. Even if I don't call these methods, if I run this, as soon as an object is created, the very first thing that will be called is a constructor. See, the constructor is called automatically. You need not to explicitly call it. Right, as soon as an object is created, it is automatically called. Now we were discussing about what is an object inside this statement. And many people have said Calci is an object. Let's assume Calci is an object. I'm gonna remove rest of the part. I'll just remove this one. See, this is a valid statement. There are no errors in this statement. If this is an object, if this is an object, if I click on run button, the constructor will be called, right? So just tell me whether the constructor will be called or not. If I run no. this, whether the constructor will be called or not. No. 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 So if this is an object, if this is an object, then the constructor should be called. Uh, many that is not an, that's not an object actually, because it's just an uh, reference variable, not an object. That's a reference variable. It's not an object, right? So if I click on run button, you you'll see there's nothing happened, no constructor called, right? So which means this is not an object. Now what I'll do, I'll just remove this part. Still a valid statement. Now tell me whether the constructor will be called or not if I click on run button. Will be called. It will be called? Yes, but uh, it doesn't have a, I mean like uh, a reference for that. Um, mm -hmm. That object will not have any label for that, to name that mm -hmm. object. But it will yeah. not gonna have any name assigned, right? Yes. But the constructor will be called, right? How about yes. others? No, it will, be, it will behave as a uh, orphan object. Mm -hmm. We didn't create an object uh, of the calculator class as of now. Hmm. I mean, if I click on run, the constructor will be called and the object will be created, but it will not going to have uh, any name reference. assigned. Name, name. Yeah, any, any reference or any name assigned. So if I click on run button, see, calling constructor. The constructor yes. is called. So if this is an object, then what is the need of that calci? Why we need that calci? You're saying that it's a name assigned to that object. Why why we need that name? Why um, we need calculator? 
because to retrieve that object and uh, to put some operation on that object so we need a reference for that operation as in for calling methods right methods yes so in order to call add in order to call subtract we need that calci like calci dot yes. add calci dot uh, subtract so without without that calci can i still call add method it means i mean if if calci is not there we'll not be able to call add method we'll not be able to call uh, divide we need that calci that is mandatory right yes or can i still can i still call addition without that calci as well can i no. call that it's not possible right until you make it static no forget about starting non static we are we are not talking about starting non static right now we cannot call a method without that reference right yes we can still call it we can simply say new calculator that, dot, dot uh, add. right if i run this you're going to see calling constructor adding some numbers executed now what if i want to call subtract how will i call that now Again, create I need to write object, create one more object and then say calculator, new calculator dot, dot subtract, Sorry. new calculator dot divide, new calculator yeah. dot multiply. So it means in order to call four methods, I'm creating four objects. If I run this, you'll see that constructor is called four times. It means if we have uh, 100 methods, in order to call 100 methods, we'll be calling constructor 100 times, we'll be creating 100 objects in a memory. That is what we don't want. So what we want is that only one object to be created and all the methods should be referred from the same object reference. So what we do, uh, instead of doing it like this, we generally store it into, let's say a variable. Wherever the object is created, I'm gonna store that uh, address of that object into a variable. I'm gonna give it any name, could be ABCD as well. Generally, we give it a meaningful name, so I've named it as Calci. So, in java every variable has some type like if i'm storing a value as 100 into a variable called as value equal to 100 what is the type of this variable so what type of variable uh we're going to hold this value int exactly int. because this is a numeric value right can i write string over here instead of int will that work no can I write Boolean? No. So it will only gonna hold integer values. The type will always be int because the value is a numeric value. If I write string over here, it will gonna throw some error. So string values are always inside double quotes, right? So if, if the value is something like hello, can I store it inside int? I cannot. I cannot store it inside Boolean. The type will always be of a string type, right? If a value is a string. So if I talk about this string, what is string? What is string in Java? It's a class. How about others? What is string? Sequence of characters data type exactly this is the data type it's a class as well so let's let's check from string let's mouse over onto string and say what string says string class string is also a class in java right so if string string is also a data type it is also a class if this is a class then what is value for string what is this value for string? Object. Object, not object, but object reference. Reference, right? yeah, object reference. reference value. So if we say value dot, it will gonna show you a list of all the methods inside string class. You can see all these are coming from internal string class itself. String is an internal class in Java, right? Same way, when we are storing this value, when we are storing this value, this is a variable name that we have given to it. 
we cannot store it inside int. We cannot store it inside string. This can only be stored into a type of its own class. So that is the reason we call it as a type. See, if I write calculators over here, we're gonna get some exception. If you mouse over, Eclipse will give you a suggestion. It says calculators cannot be resolved to a type. So this thing is called as a type. It gives you quick fixes, create a class calculators or change to calculator. If I click on this, this will change it to calculator. So this is your type. This is your variable. This is your assignment operator. This is a keyword. And this thing is your constructor. And this whole thing creates an object in a memory. So this is what the very basics. And if you call the method uh, calc.add, calc.subtract, calc.divide, calc.multiply, and if you run this, only and only one object will be created and all the methods will be referred from the same object reference, right? So that's what the very basic concept. Although these things will be covered from scratch in your core Java sessions. What is a method? What are objects? What, how to create object? So what is heap? All these things will be covered in uh, where the objects are all uh, created in the memory. So all these concepts will be covered in your core Java uh, lectures. So don't worry about it. So today you just, I mean, in order to make you understand what Selenium is. So this is a little bit of coding that I am actually doing. But don't worry about the coding part. If you're not familiar with the programming, we'll be covering everything in the Java concepts, right? Why calling constructor is coming once? Because only one object is created. As soon as the constructor is called, I mean, the constructor is called only once because only one object is created. That is the reason this calling constructor is printed only once, right? So now we are not creating multiple objects. So now uh, let's say uh, uh, this addition method, I've written some 500 lines of code with very complex logic. Now what I want that uh, if anyone has to do any addition, any subtraction should not recreate this method. He can use this method of mine and uh, can implement the addition functionality, subtraction, division, whatever he wants to do, he can pick it from my library. He should not recreate the entire method. So I want to launch this project as an open source project in the market. Open source means you need not to buy any license in order to use this project. Anyone who want to do add subtract can actually do it uh, from my project. And the other thing what I want is uh, open source does not only mean that it is free of cost. It is free of cost plus anyone can contribute into the development of this project as well next time if any developer comes he likes my project like uh, he can also contribute into the development part as well like someone says i really like your project i want to add some functionality for calculating percentage square root and number of other things i want to enhance this project he is most welcome so anyone can contribute into the development and anyone can use it free of cost. That is what open source means, right? No license required. So how to launch this open source in the market? I'll just right click over here, go to export, click on Java, click on jar file, click on next and give it a name, name it as calculator version 1.0.jar and let's store it somewhere on desktop click on finish and you're gonna see a jar file generated over here this is what the calculator version one now it's not like if i double click on it, it will it will gonna install calculator on my machine it is not going to do any installation right so with this jar file, we're only gonna to come to know that what all classes are there inside this project, what all methods are there, right? Even a developer, if, if he has not shared any code uh, related to what is there inside method, will not be able to see that code, but will still be able to call the functionality of addition, division, and can implement that functionality in our own project. That is what we can do with the help of this jar file. Now, I want anyone throughout the world can access addition, division, subtraction method, my calculator project. So I'll upload this jar file on my website. 
because website can be accessed from any part of the world. So next time whosoever want to do addition division can go to my website, download this jar file and include the jar file in his own project and can access the functionality. And after that, what I did, uh, I left this organization once this project is done. I am going to close this project now, right? And then I joined a new organization. Let's say I join uh, again as a Java developer, I join HSBC Bank, right? So let's assume they have their banking domain implementing implemented in Java itself, where they have a class with the name as banking. Let's add a main method to it as well. And there were some functionality already written. So they have a method called as profit. They have implemented a method called as loss. So all these methods were already written initially. And I was hired in between of this project. They asked me to implement a functionality that could add salaries for n number of employees. So something related, I need to create a method called as add over here. Now, if I talk about this add method, let's assume the logic of this add method is completely similar to what we have created inside the calculator project. So same logic I have to implement it over here. Now, there are two ways to design it. Either I should start coding the entire addition method again, but it was like a 500 lines of code with a very complex logic. I can write it, but it may take me days to finish it. But if it is already available in an open source project, why should I write the entire logic again? I'll simply go to their website, download their jar file, right click on my project, go to build path, click on add external archives, and will pick that calculator jar file import it as a reference library to my project. So if you open this reference library, you're gonna see the same calculator class and all these methods showing up over here. But you're not gonna see what is written inside edition because developer has not shared that code. Anyways, we are, we are not worried about that. We're not going to create edition. We just want to implement it because uh, we don't want to recreate the entire method again. So now I can go inside this class since I got access to calculator class, I can simply say calculator calc equal to new calculator. And my banking class is able to understand what this calculator is. It is not throwing any error. Why? Because of this jar file. If the jar file is not here, if I remove it, then it will not be able to understand what calculator is. If you mouse over onto it, it will ask you to create a class as calculator but this class is already created in some third party project. That third party project we have added in a form of a jar file in this project by simply going over here and clicking over here, right? Now I can go inside add and simply say calc.add. See, I've implemented it without rewriting the entire code. Now let's change this to add salary. Now, if I want to call add salary from this banking, how will I call it? By simply creating an object of banking, I'll say banking B equal to new banking. And I'm gonna say B dot add salary. Just save this and run this, and you're gonna see that same functionality is executed without rewriting the entire code. So if I talk about this jar file, this will now act as an API to HSBC Bank, right? This will be treated as an API to this project. And if you're talking about Selenium, Selenium is one of the same thing. Selenium is available in a form of a single jar file or multiple collection of jar files. Selenium is a project which is already designed, already developed. There are a lot of classes already created, a lot of methods, functionality already designed. We just need to inherit those functionalities and then uh, we can call those functions and automate our website. Can we do changes in the jar? Yes, we can if uh, like our developer has already shared you the source uh, code, you can read that code and you can add your own code and then check into their repository. If they like it, they're gonna include it. 
that is how selenium project works once you download selenium you get the source file as well and you can make changes to that source file and can generate a next version of star file that is how things works in the industry right so in the same project if you want to use selenium you can easily do that just right click on your project go to build path add external archives from the selenium website i downloaded the selenium jar so i'll go over here just add one single jar file just a 20 mb jar file although i have not added selenium 3 there's a reason behind it but we'll be working on later selenium 3 only right but there's just like uh, one of the selenium jar file i added just a 10 mb jar file one single jar file that is only required to automate any website in the world that is the only configuration that is required for selenium you need one jdk one eclipse and one single selenium jar now you can automate any website in the world how like we created an object of calculator over here right which is coming from calculator jar i can go over here instead of this banking i create an object of a class called as firefox driver which is inside the selenium jar so i'm going to say firefox driver driver equal to new firefox driver and see i'm not getting any error why because the jar file is already added this firefox driver class is coming from this jar file now if i save this and run this then what will happen let's see So it's building the code just wait for a few seconds and let's see what will happen see it's launching a firefox browser and a browser is launched so just by creating an object of firefox driver class a browser is launched so where the developer has written a code maybe the developer might have written a thousand lines of code for launching the browser but where is that code written where is that code coming from anyone web driver what is web driver so where the developer has written the actual code that it will going to launch a browser How about others? In the imported jar files? In the jar file itself, exactly. Where inside that jar file? Firefox driver, inter Firefox driver is a class. See, I've created an object of this class. Interface, we cannot create an object. So yes, it is written inside the Firefox driver class. But where inside the Firefox driver class the code is written? The code is inside Firefox driver class. That is for sure. Method. Which method have we called? Have we called any method yet? No. Then where they have written code which is launching the browser? Exactly. Exactly. So whenever an object is created, the very first thing that is called is a constructor. So even if we don't create this reference, we simply create new Firefox driver and run. The very first thing that is called is a constructor. And inside constructor itself, they've written a code that it will actually going to launch the Firefox browser. See it launches a browser right now in case you want to do navigation you want to perform testing on this application uh, uh, on any website you want to automate things elements on the website then you'll be creating a reference and calling the method one by one when i say driver dot you're going to see the entire list of methods coming from this web driver library this firefox driver class one of a method that you're going to call is get which except some url so this url is in a form of string string as in double quotes 
So in double quotes, if I give HTTP google.com and save this and run this again, you're gonna see that again, a browser will launch and it will navigate to google.com. So let's wait. See? Now navigating to google.com, right? So now one by one, you can call the methods and you can automate the entire website. That is how we'll be working on Selenium. So like the very first test is to get the title of this page. So I'm gonna call another method that says title. So get title, we're gonna get the title of the current page, but it will not gonna print the title because printing task is not of Selenium. Who is gonna print it? Java. So in Java, we're gonna write system out print ln and we'll put this thing inside system out print ln and then after it, printing it, the title after uh, printing hello, the sir? title hi yeah tell me yes yeah, sir rajat yeah. sir uh, i have one question so uh, yeah, by using the object uh, yes yeah, by using the object of that firefox driver class we uh -huh. we call these methods like driver dot get and system dot out dot print ln absolutely yeah, sir. So my question is, uh, all these methods are written in Firefox driver constructor? Not inside constructor, inside the class. Okay, sir. Inside this class. Okay, understand. Yes. And maybe it, it may happen that the get method is not coming from Firefox driver class. It may happen. Okay, sir. Right. If you want to, if you want to see what all methods are there, you need to go to the main website of Selenium, which is the main website of Selenium. HQ.org. Seleniumhq.org. Now the website is changed to selenium.dev. So this is the new website of Selenium. Right? Selenium headquarters. So over here you can see Selenium automates browsers. That's it. Selenium is only for web-based testing. Anything and everything can be automated using Selenium, but on a web-based application only, right? If you go to menu, if you go to download, you'll find the latest version of Selenium over here, that is Selenium 3.141.59. And Selenium 4 is currently at the alpha stage. So this is still in the development phase. Very soon, Selenium 4 is going to hit the market, right? Then if you go down, you're gonna see the web driver language bindings with different languages languages like uh, ruby is there javascript is there java we just started with the java part so we're going to go to the api document and here you're going to see what all classes are there within the jar file that we have downloaded we added to the project so these are the list of classes it's a huge library and if you go over here you'll search for firefox driver class you're gonna find that class over here, Firefox driver. This is the class Firefox driver. If you go down, you're gonna find method summary over here. What all methods are there inside this Firefox driver class? This is a method summary. And you can see there are just three methods inside this class. Then where get is coming from, where get title is coming from. These methods are not inside Firefox driver class. This is not inside Firefox driver class. This is not inside Firefox driver class. So where these methods are coming from? We have created an object of Firefox driver. But when I looked at this Firefox driver class, the methods are not there. So this is what we need to understand. If you look at the very beginning of this class, Firefox driver, see, Firefox driver class, it extends remote web driver. Now, what do you mean by extends? What is extends over here? What is this remote web driver? So what is extends? What is remote web driver? It's a parent, right? This is something related to the OOPS concept. So remote web driver is a parent class of this Firefox driver. If you click on this, see remote web driver is a class. If you go down and see the method summary, you're gonna see all these methods. And 
here you're going to find the method that is get it loads a new web page in the current browser window provided the url in a string format if you go down you'll find another method called as get title it gets the title of the current page so all these methods are coming from remote web driver right a child can inherit the properties of parent child will going to show his own method as well as the methods from the parent class as well right but again you need not to worry about uh, what is a parent class what is a child class right now because all these concepts will be covered once we start studying about the oops concept right so we're going to implement all these things from the oops so this is where these methods are coming from right that's the reason why we are able to see even you can check it from here when i say driver dot if you see get see get you can see the class name over here this is remote web driver this is not uh like firefox driver when we were saying calc dot we were saying add then calculator class was there because there was no parent class right so it is showing calculator but here when you say driver dot this get is coming from remote web driver this is also where you can check what all classes are associated with these methods right so now when we get the title when we say driver dot quit quit will gonna kill the driver instance close the browser if i run this now you're gonna see it will again launch a browser navigate to google get the title print it and then close the browser and quit the session let's see See, navigated to Google. See, title is Google, and over here you're gonna see that it has printed Google, right? So this is a very simple code. Now let's say I'll write one more line of code over here. Don't worry about the coding pattern. We'll be learning this very soon. So something like I'm gonna do driver dot find element by dot something called as name. Gonna give the name as Q dot send keys, and we're gonna type hello world. Don't worry what I'm doing right now. I'm just typing in the Google search box. So this statement is for typing in the Google search box. What this statement, how it is written, it is very simple. Once we start with the web driver, you should be able to understand it. But what I'm trying to show you over here is, uh, let, let's see, let, let it launch. So it navigates to Google and then it will gonna type hello world and then quit right now let's say if i talk about this what we are entering in the input box this is our test data right this url i've hard coded it over here i want this test data to become uh, like it should come from some external file because we don't maintain test data directly in the coding part right Whenever we are validating login window as well, username, password, we do a lot of permutation and combination. Enter correct username, correct password, incorrect username, incorrect password, incorrect username, correct password. A lot of permutation combination we do, right? So where do we actually maintain our test data? So where do we actually maintain it? Anyone? Excel. Excel, exactly. So what I want that the data should not be hard coded over here. It should actually come from the Excel sheet. But Selenium will not gonna do anything for that. Selenium will not gonna provide you any method, any class which will gonna do reading and writing from Excel. But that is actually your task of, I mean, that is actually your requirement of automation project that you want to maintain your test data in Excel and you want to read it from there. So Selenium will not gonna provide you any, any help in that. Then what you'll be doing, you'll be adding additional API, which is called as POI API provided by Apache. When I'm talking about API, it's another jar file. So like I said, Selenium is only 25%. Selenium is only for launching a website and performing action like clicking, typing, that's it. Everything else that you want to do, will be done with the help of some integrated API. 
like Excel reading and writing will be done with the help of POI API. So that is another jar file. When I'm talking about API, another jar file, another Java project created by a third party organization called as Apache, which will help you in manipulating Microsoft documents. You can do reading, writing with Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and number of components are there. So like the way you added Selenium jar in this project, you'll again go to build path, add external archive, You'll go to Apache website, you'll download their libraries, their API, and you're gonna include this POI API in this project. And then you can do Excel reading and writing by the available classes inside this POI API. Same way, your data could be inside, not inside Excel sheet, maybe the data is there inside the database. Maybe SQL, maybe MySQL. Now you want to do some database testing as well. That is another requirement in testing, right? Whatever data is showing up in database, that same data should be there in the website itself. So I want to write some SQL queries, some inner joins, and I want to validate the data is actually the same showing up on the website. So I can do that sort of database testing as well, but Selenium will not gonna do anything in that. Your vendors like SQL, MySQL, Oracle, they provide their own APIs in order to perform JDBC, ODBC connection. So there are jar files provided by your vendors as well. In case you want to perform a MySQL connection, you can simply right click over here, go to build path, go to add external archives, and then look for a MySQL jar file, which is something like MySQL connector Java. Click on open and that will be added right so that's not a task of selenium it's a task of mysql api right similarly when you've written this code it's just like three four lines of code but i may have three four test cases in it maybe the very first test case is verify user is able to navigate to google.com the second test case is verify the title of the page the third test case is verify user is able to enter into the text box so are we getting any result over here out of three test cases? How many are passed? How many are failed? Is it showing how many pass? How many fail? It's not showing that thing. But at the end, what we need from automation, we want to know what all manual test cases we have, what all we have executed. At the end, it should give us some result. How many are passed? How many are fail? Selenium will not going to do that. Selenium will not gonna convert your existing code into test cases, but that is what you need from automation. You just don't want to see things executed. At the end, you should get some result, right? That we have executed 100 test cases, out of that 90 pass, 10 fail. And if there are failures, there should be reason to those failures as well. So that Selenium will not gonna do that. For that, you will be integrating your Java frameworks called as JUnit or TestNG. This is nothing, this is another API, another set of jar files. So TestNG is very widely used in the industry. We'll be working on TestNG itself. Just right click, go to build path, add library, TestNG, next, finish, and you're gonna see that TestNG jars are added. See, this is another API. Now you can convert your existing code. When you run them, it will be reported as total number of test cases pass and total number of test cases fail. But you don't want to see results over here. You want some interactive reports. You want some graphical representation of report. So what you can do, you can integrate some more APIs, some reporting plugins. These are another jar files. Report ng is there, extend report is there. The reports will look something like this. I'll show it to you from my live project. Give me a moment. So guys, we are already running out of time, although it's two hours, but I'm gonna take 15 more minutes, uh, like one, five, 15 more minutes, so that I'm gonna explain you, uh, like with Selenium, you can not only test the UI part, but there are a lot of integrations that you can do. So just be with me for 15 minutes. And uh, see, these are some sort of reports. We're almost done with the session. So, one of the basic report that we're gonna see is something like this. This report is generated with the help of a plugin called as ReportNG, which will tell us how many are passed, how many are skipped, 
failed pass percentage. If you go to individual tests, you'll see uh, the test data that's been read, right? A lot of things are there. You can integrate screenshots as well. You can customize this report as well. You can have more interactive report, something like in case uh, you want to see a test engine internal report, this is one of the email level report where you have total number of test cases, pass, fail. If you go to uh, go over here, the screenshot is missing because I just removed it. So you can add your screenshot, you can add your exception message over here. A lot of things you can integrate. If you want to design more interactive reports, then uh, whatever that we have seen so far, so you can have this extent report generated. So this is one of the very widely used report. You can see the test case, this is failed one, this is passed, and each and every log, clicking on add uh, button, typing first name, last name, postcode, test case pass. And over here, you're gonna see graphical representation, total pass, fail, skip, who is the automation tester behind it, organization, build number, start time, end time, total time taken, everything is reported. But this is not a task of Selenium, right? These are your different APIs that you have integrated. So this is done with the help of this reporting API, right? Then, uh, like, we have written four or five lines of code. It take it took somewhere around few seconds to execute it. But once you are automating your entire website, you may end up writing thousand lines of code, and the entire execution might gonna take somewhere around four hours. So, will you gonna sit in front of your machine and will you gonna watch each and every step is being executed or not? You're not gonna do that, right? Otherwise, there is no purpose of automation. Right, so you want that your script should gonna validate each and everything fine and at the end you should be able to know that each and everything is being clicked, typed, all the action are performed or not. So what you want from the entire execution, there should be some logs that should be generated on a separate file with a timestamp, like on this day, this hour, this minute, this second, Slaynam has clicked on submit button. And on this hour, this minute, this second, Selenium has typed into this particular input box. And for each and every line, there should be a log that should be generated in that file. So again, that is not a task of Selenium. For that, you'll be implementing something called as log4j API, another jar file, right? So you can see collection of jar files, which are not related to Selenium, but will be integrated with your Selenium project. And then you may want that uh, you are executing uh, some code, which actually takes four hours to execute. But what you want, till the time you reach your office, it should be automatically executed. Every day, your regression should, suit should automatically get executed. So when we are talking about automatic execution, we are not going to open Eclipse and click on the run button. We need some utility, some tool, Something like uh, this. If I double click on it, it will compile my code, build it, and run it. Although right now it is not going to automate anything, but it is building up a small Java project. So it's building the code. And then it will it is going to compile some three source files. I'm gonna call the test suit, that is test ng, and we're gonna run some basic test, just printing something test run three and then done. So this is not done with the help of Eclipse. This is done with the help of a build tool that is called as Maven. So Maven is one of the build tools. Now maybe uh, you are running the test on your machine and a client is sitting in US or in UK and client want to see the same execution. Client want to see how many test cases are getting passed, how many are getting failed. You want to see the reporting part as well everything all the logs he want to see but he is not very technical i mean you can give him the entire code installed on his machine and then you can ask him to run it from here but client is not very technical he might not be able to use eclipse and other things he want that wherever he is and at the time of presentation or at the time of presenting uh, the product to someone else he should be able to see like what all test cases you have written and what all are passing, what all are failing, whether the build is stable or not. So we're gonna give him some UI. That is what Jenkins is. He can log into that UI. He'll get our regression suit over there. He'll just click on a button and the test will start running. 
and at the end he'll he should be able to see the reports as well on that ui just by click on the link he should be able to see the report all the screenshot for failure everything in the test should be reported in front of him but there has to be no installation done on his machine just with a url he should be able to access it that is one of the feature of jenkins although jenkins is a quite huge thing but this is one of the feature what we're going to use for jenkins so you can see there are a lot of things but these things there is no selenium involved but without these things you cannot create an automation project right so if we are working on selenium id just a record and play we cannot use all these things and then at the end we'll be designing two live project one using the hybrid approach data keyword and one using the page object model which is very widely used in the industry and i'll be designing the entire framework in front of you so that if in case you want to implement automation in your organization you should be able to do it from scratch or in case if you're planning to justify two three years of experience after this course you should be able to do it easily now this is uh, about the web automation we have integrated everything related to web but we have just seen the database part can also be handled if you're working in a selenium project you can integrate your mysql sql oracle api and you can automate the entire database queries as well right so database can also be handled and if i say mobile can also be handled yeah we'll be covering jenkins as well so not just web based not just database we can automate mobile stuff as well we can automate any application on mobile be it whatsapp facebook any application that you have installed we can automate any native hybrid web application if we know selenium with another extension called as appium appium is nothing it's just a wrapper over your web driver api whatever code that we have written over here <coughs> instead of this firefox driver class if i write android driver over here instead of firefox the same code will be executed on the real device i'll show you a very small example just give me two minutes so in five minutes we'll be ending up the session i know it's getting very late but these are some important examples that i want to show it to you so what i'm going to do i'm going to show you my real device very quick Just give me a moment, guys. Okay, so this is my real device. All right, so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to show you a sample code of APM. So see, the same code that we have written right now, driver.get, google.com, Driver dot find elements, driver dot quit. This is the same code that we have written when we are testing Selenium for web-based application. Just that over here, I'll be switching to Android driver and not Firefox driver. Now, when I run this code, let me run it and let me show you my device again. So now you're going to see that. The code will actually going to run on uh, the real device itself. Let's wait for a little. See? Just give it a moment. It will launch. The browser chrome browser and then it should navigate to google.com so this is the actual device i'm taking a remote of my real device and then the test execution completed not just this you can automate any application you can even make a phone call 
So instead of if I comment out this code, I'll enable this code and I'll show you uh, comment out this part and run this again. And now you're going to see that it will actually going to go to my mobile device, will launch a dialer. Okay, just a moment. Uh, got locked. <clears throat> See, it launches a dialer, and now it's going to make a phone call. See? Although there are no networks, so it didn't talk. But yeah, I mean, you can see it uh, was actually performing action on the real uh, dialer, right? Android dialer. So this is how, I mean, uh, if you know Selenium, just with a very basic configuration, you can use the same code and that will run on your real mobile device. And you know that mobile industry is quite huge these days. So every big organization who have their web application, they have their mobile applications as well. And most of the time when we are traveling, we don't carry a laptop along with us, right? We are mostly on our mobile devices, but even purchasing, entering credit card information on Amazon, on big, big applications, right? So if the testing of web-based application is important, the testing of mobile applications are also important. If we can automate the web application, we can automate mobile applications as well. So this as well will gonna cover in our session, at least this much configuration that I've shown you, we're gonna see this thing in our sessions as well. You should be able to automate uh, web applications and desktop applications as well. Uh, Sir, Ranbir, I have one question, sir. I'm Rahul. Okay, and initially I mentioned that I'm Rahul, Rahul Arora. Yeah, tell me. Uh, sir, uh, uh, ju just before you launch, sir, uh, one application in mobile. So, sir, mm -hmm. how the same code knows that, uh, you know, he, that the same code, how the same code knows that uh, it should be run in your, on your mobile, same code? Yeah, there, there, are some, there are some additional configuration that you need to do. You need to configure Appium. See, Selenium configuration is just a 10 MB jar file, but Appium configuration might gonna take more than five GB space on your desk. So we'll be config, okay. we'll be doing all those configuration in in our course as well. So the only change in the Appium part is the configuration. So REST okay, so code is similar to WebDriver only. Okay. Right. So we're gonna do that configuration in the course. Right, so you can see we can automate mobile applications as well. And not just this, if you go to Appium official website, that is apmpro.com, and if you look at their latest edition, uh, I'll show it to you. Uh, look over here. Very recently, they introduced something uh, called as testing window desktop app with Appium. There's something called as win app driver which you may have heard about through this you can even launch calculator and you can perform testing on your desktop applications right so this is what win app driver and the base is web driver only if you look over here these libraries are coming from selenium there's a same code driver dot find element so not just desktop not not just web not just database mobile you can automate desktop applications as well and finally, the last part left is APIs. <clears throat> Can we automate SAP? See, uh, most of the part, uh, although this is an open source library, this is uh, not, I can say 100% uh, desktop can be automated, but many part can be easily integrated and can be automated using this. There, there are some tools uh, available which can inspect elements on your desktop applications. So whether SAP can be automated or not, if it is a desktop application, uh, if uh, this uh, WinApp driver supports uh, the element inspection on those applications, that can be automated. And if it is a web-based application, then you can easily automate it using Selenium. But for the desktop part, you actually need to uh, do troubleshooting around this API, right? So I've, I've tried simple calculator uh, project through this uh, WinApp driver and I was able to do it, but never tried the SAP application. So maybe if you can try it, 
uh, after learning Selenium, then uh, you can let me know whether it works or not. <clears throat> right. So last part that is left is uh, APIs. Now there are various tools available for APIs called as Postman. Is there SOAP UI is there? But companies, what they say that they already have a framework in place where they have a UI layer automated through Selenium database layer automated through database APIs. Even they're handling mobile part as well. Now, in order to automate web services, they don't want to do manual testing on web services because Postman is majorly used for doing manual testing on web services. They want that they are, the framework that we've already designed in Java should actually support web services as well. The complete automation, they want to automate this part, right? If anyone wants to know what is a web service, uh, then again, it will gonna take at least 15, 20 minutes and we are already running out of time. So I'm gonna show you one of my uh, rest assured API uh, introduction uh, course. So there you'll be able to come to know what are web services, what is rest, what is so, because these days every next website is communicating around the web services, right? So even like if we talk about our development cycle, we have UI layer, we have middle layer that is uh, the service layer and we have the DB layer. So very first when the development starts, the DB layer is designed and then the middle layer is designed. UI comes at the very end in the picture. So these days what happens if, if the UI is not there, companies will gonna ask you to test APIs. Let's say for login window, there's an API, login API. So if you perform testing on the API, then later on when the API is mapped with the UI, you're not gonna find like functionality related issues on the ui part you're only going to find very cosmetic issues because apis you have already tested it right so now a framework is already placed company want that you should not invest in any different tool for api automation so we can use something called as rest assured api this is another jar that can be integrated that will automate your entire rest web service so now you can see if you know selenium you should be able to handle all these things in one single project. So Selenium is actually your base for automation because with Selenium, I mean, in this training, you're not just learning Selenium. You're actually building up your base for automation because all these things that we, that are listed down over here will be, will remain same when you're working with the APM will remain same when you're working with uh, WinApp driver will remain same when you're working with the API automation part as well. All the log4j, maven, Jenkins, test ng, everything will gonna remain same in case of API automation as well. So that is what Selenium is all about. So Selenium is open source. It's not a tool, set of libraries. We can integrate anything that is feasible in Java, which is not possible if you're working in any particular automation tool because QTB, UFT, RFT, all these tools have some boundary, some limitations. We can automate those features which are provided inside that tool only. But Selenium is not a tool. There is no boundary. Anything that you integrate with Java, anything that is possible in Java, you can achieve that thing in Selenium. That is what Selenium is, right? So this is all about the very first uh, demo session on Selenium. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Right. So tomorrow uh, we are meeting for the Java part. It will be somewhere on uh, two hours of a session on core Java as well. So that you're gonna come to know about the training quality of the core Java part as well. So core Java is not taken by me. There's a different instructor specifically uh, who is hired for the core Java part. So he's actually taking all the classroom batches and other batches over here at way to automation. For Core Java, he's one of the expert Core Java instructor. Don't go on my words. Just try to attend one of the demo session. You're gonna come about that. Come to know about the training quality of Core Java. But there's just like a separate training completely on Core Java, which you are getting in within the same Selenium training. Whatever that you're learning in Core Java, I'll be covering that within the Selenium examples. So all these things that I've listed down, I these things will be covered by me only. So your entire utilities, your entire frameworks, live project, entire web driver, basics, still at once, all these things I myself will be covering. Just that for core Java, you are getting a separate training 
because core java is very important till the time you're not familiar with core java because i've seen in many training people generally teach two three days of core java and then they start working on selenium till the time you're not comfortable in java till the time you're not expert in java you're really going to get tough time once you start designing a framework because framework designing has nothing to do with selenium that is purely related to java so that is the reason uh, we are going to focus more on the java part and once your java base is built up selenium is very easy you should be able to pick it up very easy right so that is all in this session now if you guys have any questions any queries if you like this session just let me know and anything that you want to be included in the session you can just let me know <coughs> So anything guys? So the Thanks. course uh, the course uh, will be completed uh, by April or somehow it will go beyond that? Yes. See, some somewhere around 2.5 to 3 months it will going to take to cover the entire topics. Java part itself will going to take 12 sessions and then we're going to have somewhere around 12 sessions on Selenium. So like six, six, around 12 weeks it will gonna take to cover the entire topics. No, rest assured is a separate uh, part. Rest assured is completely a separate training that is again somewhere on 2.5 months. We do conduct batches on rest assured as well, but rest assured again, the base is Selenium because uh, all these things that I've listed down will be there in rest assured as well, but we're not going to cover these topics uh, like separately in rest assured. So these are covered in the Selenium part. The Java is covered in the Selenium part. And once you're comfortable in this, then the next thing you can go for is the rest assured. Right? Any more questions, guys? So all these things will be recorded. You're gonna get recording from each day. So you need not to worry about it. In case you want to do practice during the weekdays, you'll be able to see the recordings as well and you'll be getting a lot of assignments and live websites for automation so that uh, you'll be involved during the week as well and in case you get stuck anywhere then uh, you can add me on my skype id so my skype id is selenium coaching and you can directly mail me on my mail id trainer at wait automation right and Sir, you can have uh, this team your uh, just one second. You can have this TeamViewer installed on your machine. This is a free software. In case you get stuck anywhere, you just need to pass on my pass in your TeamViewer ID and password to me. I can take like I've taken a remote of my mobile device. I can take a remote of your machine, no matter whichever location you are in, and I can directly fix the issue on your machine. So that is the level of support you're gonna get during the course. Not just during the course, even after the course. If you have any questions, any queries, you can check with me. Yeah, tell me. Yes, sir. sir. Time remains same, right? Because it's very suitable. Yeah, time right? Nine to eleven. Time remains same because uh, I know this is the best uh, suitable time for the uh, people who are in US and UK. We're gonna uh, keep it same. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sure. There is online many editors are there we, where you can compile the Java code, but uh, I don't recommend to use online editors. I mean, there are a lot of integration that we need to do, which those online editors might not want to support. Right, so you can use IntelliJ or you can use Eclipse. So very widely Eclipse is used, we'll be working on Eclipse itself. Right, any more questions, guys? So we are good to wind up uh, the session. Uh, I hope you guys have uh, got the day two link as well, where if not, then you can uh, visit waytoautomation.com. So under the Selenium, just click on Selenium online training. <clears throat> and here you're gonna see the day two link as well. So you can register yourself on this link. <clears throat> Sorry. So this link will be activated uh, tomorrow at 9 p.m. IST. Just need to click on this link and join the day two session as well right so i'm gonna send you all this uh, information on your email as well okay all right so thanks a lot guys
thanks a lot for joining the session i hope you guys have enjoyed it yeah thank you thank you thank you so much thank, thank you. you so much thanks thanks everyone thank you